Hey, it's Dan here. This week on The Geo Show, we're going to talk about minerals. If you'd like to join our list of patrons featured here, then go to www.patreon.com slash feegs. This week we add a friendly doggo to the list as a gold tier supporter. Thank you for your support. A mineral is defined as a naturally occurring combination of specific elements arranged in a particular repeating three-dimensional solid structure. Naturally occurring implies that minerals are not artificially made, although many naturally occurring minerals, such as diamonds, are also made in laboratories. That doesn't disqualify them from being minerals. Specific elements means that most minerals have a specific chemical formula or composition. The mineral pyrite, for example, is iron to sulfur, two atoms of sulfur for each atom of iron. Any significant departure from that would make it a different mineral. These can vary in what is known as a solid solution. The mineral olivine, for example, can range all the way from iron to one silicate to magnesium to one silicate. Intervening compositions are written as FeMg2 SiO4, meaning that iron and magnesium can be present in any proportion. Next we're going to talk about atoms. Minerals are made up of atoms, just like any other matter. An atom is made up of positive protons and neutral neutrons in the nucleus and negative electrons arranged in energy shells around the nucleus. The first shell holds two electrons and outer shells hold more, but atoms strive to have eight electrons in their outermost shell. They either gain or lose electrons to achieve this, and in doing so become either cations if they lose electrons or anions if they gain them. These building blocks form in bonds and lattices. The main types of bonding in minerals are ionic bonding, where electrons are transferred, and covalent bonding, where electrons are shared. Some minerals have metallic bonding or other forms of weak bonding. Minerals form in specific three-dimensional lattices, and the nature of these lattices and type of bonding within them have important implications for mineral properties. Minerals are grouped according to the anion part of their formula, with some common types being oxides, such as iron oxide, sulfides, such as pyrite, sulfates, such as copper sulfate, halides, like table salt, carbonates, like this fossiliferous limestone, phosphates, like this apatite, native minerals, like this native copper, and silicates. All silicates include the silica tetrahedra, four oxygen surrounding a single silicon atom, arranged in different structures such as chains, sheets, or others. Silicate minerals are, by far, the most important minerals in the Earth's crust as they make up most of it. From granites to basalts, shales to sandstones, most minerals you come into contact with are silicates. The Formation of Minerals Most minerals in the crust form from the cooling and crystallization of magma. Some form from hot water solutions, during metamorphism, or weathering, or through organic processes. Next, we're going to talk about mineral properties. Some of the important properties for mineral identification include hardness, which is how hard it is, which is on a logarithmic scale, where talc is 1, calcite is 3, glass is 5.5, quartz is 7, and diamond, the hardest, is 10. Next, we have cleavage and fracture. If it breaks along specific planes, then it is known as cleavage. Random cracks and joints are known as fracture. Density is how much mass or how many atoms are packed in a specific volume of a mineral. Luster is how it reflects light. Is it metallic or non-metallic? Light does not pass through metals, so if it is opaque and reflective, then it has a metallic luster. If it is not metallic, then there are several ways to describe it. It could be vitreous, like glass, resinous, like a resin, silky, like silk, pearly, like a pearl, or earthy, which is dull like dirt. Streak is the color of the powder material. Hematite is silver, but has a red streak. Pyrite looks like gold, but has a black streak. Color isn't a great diagnostic property. Many of the same minerals can come in all sorts of colors. For example, Citrine, amethyst, and smoky quartz are all variants of the common mineral quartz. 
I hope you enjoyed this episode on minerals, and don't forget to like and subscribe, and hit the bell button for more notifications. With that, I bid you adieu, and cheers. Cheers.